Today, we are going to be discussing something that I know is going to trigger you deep down inside, and it's kind of borderline bringing up some uncomfortable feelings and situations and thoughts in my head right now. And we'll be really honest with you guys. This is something that is universal. We've all experienced this. You can lie to yourself. You can lie to your friends. You can lie to your man, your woman, be like, I'm not jealous. I'm not as care. But we are human beings, okay? We all have a little moment of like jealousy or worry or stress. We're protective over our partners. We think that we can control a lot of things. These are things that are really hard to unlearn and then rewire again to a more healthier perspective if we haven't done the work in the healing. I always talk about that. The scenario and situation at hand that we are going to be tearing apart is when your man or your girl is going out and you're sitting there worried about whether or not they're talking to other people, what they're doing, why they're not responding to you, wondering why you get into such a bad mood, why you start taking it out on your partner. We're going to dive into all of that. Before I get into it, I just want to introduce myself. Let's shake hands, motherfuckers. My name is Eden Middleman. I am a certified dating and sex coach. Super unconventional, I swear. I yell. I give you tough love. I don't tell you what you want to hear. I tell you what you need to hear. I'm kind of that person that really doesn't give a fuck if your feelings get hurt in the moment. I know that what I'm saying will help you in the future based off of my experiences. I don't talk out of my ass. I know what the fuck I'm saying. I've been there. I've done that. And that is why I feel so passionate and confident to discuss it. It's always good to get an outsider perspective on situations or hear advice from other people rather than your friends and family who are there to just stroke your ego. So let's paint a picture. You are at home. This is normally how it goes. You're at home. It's evening time. You know your man is going out. You know your girl is going out. Going to a bar, a club, God knows where. There are other women and there are other men around. There are temptations. There are social interactions and moments. There's a waitress. There's a waiter. There's a bartender. There's an Uber driver. There are people everywhere that your man or your woman will have to interact with throughout this night. And you are sitting there with crippling anxiety, worried about, holy fuck, what if they fall in love? What if they fuck somebody else? What if, what if, what if? Need I remind you that this is just a what if? Need I remind you that the way you think says more about you than it does about your partner? Need I remind you that we create fantasies in our minds more so than actually acknowledging the facts of the situation? Your partner should be allowed to go out. Your partner should be able to respect you when they go out. Otherwise, you should not be in a relationship with this person. If they have not given you a reason to not trust them, you cannot not trust them. Are you following Your past experiences and traumas cannot bleed into this relationship unless you want to destroy this relationship. That is self-sabotage, a term I use continuously on this channel. The common denominator between you and all the relationships you will face is you. If you have not dealt and sorted and healed and dealed, you will continuously bring your shit and your baggage into relationships and therefore your relationships will never be long and happy and prosperous and abundant and beautiful. Stop bringing your past into the future. Now, it is hard. So this is why you being able to communicate with your partner, not when they're out, at an appropriate time, about how it makes you feel and the feelings it triggers you because you've experienced so-and-so with so-and-so. You know, I got cheated on years ago. He was working at some sort of camp, ended up with, you know, this counselor, fucking a counselor. So every time, you know, any future partner would come in after that relationship was over, every time they were busy doing something or at their job or, you know, not able to answer their phone, I always suspected that there was probably a female involved. And that's a really grand, stupid, illogical generalization to make onto other people who are not like that person. Your ex is not who you're dating now and who you're dating now is not like your ex. A lot of us are insecure about our partner going out and what they're doing because we know how we behave when we go out. I said what I fucking said. If you go out and you're flirty, if you go out and you get numbers, if you go out and you do these things that you know are not necessarily good in a monogamous relationship, quite frankly, it is cheating. You are projecting your own issues, insecurities, past experiences onto this person. You worry that they are going to behave the same way you do. That is why if your partner is doing this and you've given them no reason to not trust you, you've been nothing but open, you communicate and they still feel in some type of way. It could be their past bleeding into the present or it could be the fact that they themselves are guilty and that is why they are hounding you down. 
before you feel any type of way, before you talk to your partner about anything, you need to make sure that you know where the source of this discomfort is coming from. If it has come from something that they have done, then you are owed conversations. You are owed reassurance until you feel good about it. If they did something that made you not trust them and every single time they go out, it's just a trigger for you, no matter what they say, no matter what they do, you are not in a healthy relationship and you need to leave. There is only so much you can do in certain situations after after disrespect and trust has been lost, there is really not much left in terms of the foundations and anything on top of the foundations will come tumbling down. So let's say you found the source of what it is that makes you uncomfortable truthfully. Let's say you're, you know what, maybe I'm coming to the realization that I'm insecure and I think that I'm not deserving of this man or of this woman. I think that he or she is good looking and can get better looking than me, blah, 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 whatever it might be. Focus on what the reality of the situation here is. They chose to date you. They know, and everyone knows that there will always be hotter and smarter and better in different aspects, but they chose you because there is no you. I want you to build confidence around that. And I will do a video on confidence one-on-one because I think it's super important in relationships. I think everyone needs to be confident in order to handle a relationship because your relationship is not just you plus your man or you plus your girl in a fucking bubble. It's you plus your person plus the rest of the world that you've got to deal with. You need to be okay with that. You need to be okay with knowing there will be moments where he or she is going to interact with another he or she. And I need to be okay with that. I need to trust them because the only person that suffers when you don't trust your partner who has given you no reason to not trust them is you. You're sitting there pissed off, angry, sabotaging your relationship when nothing was done, nothing was wrong. You're looking out for revenge. You're doing some shady shit. You're looking at this following list every five minutes. You are making yourself sick. You are the only one that suffers when you are not confident and when you don't know who the fuck you are. When you are worried that he or she is going to give into temptation. If it is not coming from you, if they did something, then don't be in a relationship that sets you up to be constantly in a state of anxiety and discomfort. You guys know I'm all about accountability and owning your shit. So you need to be able to take yourself in that moment and learn how to deal with it. Look at the facts. Like I always say, they have not done anything. They are not doing anything. And if they're talking or someone approaches them, I trust them enough to know that they will say not interested. And at the end of the day, guys, let's think worst case scenario, because I know that that doesn't give you any comfort. We can't trust ourselves. We don't want to trust what, what the actual truth is. We don't want to trust anybody. We all have trust issues, trust, trust, whatever. So let's say they do go out. Let's say he does get approached or she does get approached. Let's say they interact. Let's say he fucks him or her. Let's say something happens. Let's say worst case scenario happens. Did you lose? Do you lose when a partner who cannot respect you, who doesn't really want you, who will give into temptation? Is it a loss? Is it a loss if you lose somebody who is disrespecting you, who is willing to give into temptation easily? Is that a loss? No, that's a win. When you lose shitty people, it's a win. When you see true colors, it's a win. When the universe or God or whoever gets rid of people in your life or shows you things, it's a win. It's better now than later. You have to start looking at life that way. You cannot control them by texting them and calling them every five minutes. However, I do believe that partners should work together to make sure that they know what their partner might need. From time to time to update me, that's not a problem. That's bare minimum. And that should be done without being asked. But for a lot of people in different dynamics in the past, they're not used to that. People try and act like the cool girlfriend, cool guy friend, right? Meanwhile, they're in the room anxious. They don't want to seem needy. They don't want to, you know, ask for that kind of reassurance. In a relationship, your partner should know this is important to do. Hey, babe, you know, we went went to a different bar. Hey, babe, you know, thinking about you from time to time. Your partner should not be on their phone the whole time when they're going out. That's not healthy. It is beneficial to your partner and therefore the relationship when they have time away from you and can live their own life with their friends and family. They will appreciate you so much more when they spend time with you after the fact. It is healthy. When you go on girls night, when you go on guys night, you shouldn't be on your phone. You should spend time and hang out with other people. 
Now, the problem with a lot of you guys, when you reflect that way and try and, you know, play it fair and be like, well, what would I do in those situations? A lot of you guys don't really care to spend time outside of your relationship. That's unhealthy. That's why you're attached. That's why you're obsessed. That's why you're unhealthy. That's why you're toxic. That's why you're crying in your room when you're not with your person every fucking five minutes. That's not healthy. So you making that reflection and trying to think, well, if rules are reversed, no, it's not fair. Your partner should have a certain amount of freedom to be able to do what they want, but you both should have a certain amount of trust with that freedom. In fact, my new way of thinking is I want my man to go and do whatever the fuck he wants. I'm going to watch how he moves. If he decides to message me because he thought about me, great. That's wonderful. If he forgets about me the whole night, I keep tabs. That's not acceptable to me. I won't nag you. No, I won't nag you. I don't want you to do anything that you don't want to do. If you give in to temptation, trust me, I'll find out about it one day. If you want to do that, you got to live with that. Because you're going to lose me and I'm the only me that there is on this planet. I know my worth. If you want to lose that and jeopardize that by interacting and by being, you know, swayed by temptation, by all means, you're a weak man. I want a strong man. That's what I want. And the sooner I realize this for my partner, the better it is for me. The less time I waste, and I say waste with quotation marks because I don't believe it's a waste. I think that you do learn a lot. But the less time I waste with somebody who isn't the person that I deserve to be with. That's confidence. When you start breeding that energy with yourself, when you are not confident, when you are worried your man or, or woman is doing something with other people, when they're out and about, when you start thinking those thoughts, you're attracting that. And that's a scary thing to think about because our brains like to think more negatively than positively. It's easier to think negatively. It's easier to be sad and upset and angry and worked up and pissed off than it is to be like content. I want my man to have fun. I want my girl to have fun because when I do this, I also want to have fun. There are a few tangible things I want to give you guys until you get to the point where you feel comfortable. It takes time once you kind of work on your self-confidence, once you kind of work on your insecurities, once you work on past traumas and you start to be able to be like, okay, nope, nope. I know I'm going to feel this way. I know it's going to trigger me, but here's what I'm going to do about it. I want you to do something that's super good for you. I want you to do an extra long skincare routine. I want you to put music on. I want you to put your phone away. Okay. Stop looking at your phone every five minutes to check if a message came through. Stop. That is just making things worse. Desperate energy, worrying, stress. Again, you're feeding the fire of the things that you don't want to create. They will happen because you're creating that with the energy that you're putting out. Put the phone away. Read a book. Watch a movie. Call a friend over. These distractions are healthier than you sitting in your room and thinking of all the things you want to type out to your man and all the things that could be happening in your fucking head. Doing these things will help because as time goes by, you'll realize, oh, wow, okay, I didn't freak out as much or I didn't react the way I usually do. Or you know what? I'm showing him that I'm trusting him. This is benefiting our relationship. If you notice when you allow your partner to enjoy their night and you wish them nothing but well, you know, when you have brief communication from time to time and just checking in and whatever, they, the relationship becomes healthier and better. Even if you don't feel that way, like sometimes I'm like, have fun. I'm like, fuck, like, I don't really actually want you to stay out all night and have fun and drink and party with your boys. Like, I really don't. I don't want that. I don't like that. Like, you know, I'd rather you like stay at home. You know, of course, we all rather our partners stay at home, but that's not healthy. You'll realize that when you wish your partner well over and over again until you actually believe it, until you actually want it, until you actually are not that worried because you realize, well, nothing happened last night, nothing happened the night before that, nothing happened last week, nothing happened last boys night, nothing, nothing, nothing. It's going to become easier. You just need to prove to yourself that you can make it through these next few hours. You need to prove to yourself that you can deal with this without resorting to anything that's not healthy or that will ruin your relationship and yourself. Go to bed early. Another huge tip. If your man or girl is going out all night, you can always ask them, let me know when you're home, text me when you're home. This will give you peace of mind to know when they got home, that they're safe, things like that. That's what I always do. I want my partners to tell me, you know, what's going on throughout the night. There's a change, game plan change. Like they should be messaging me and letting me know what's going on. That's just good communication. My partner usually fills me in the next day, kind of like a catch up. You know, we want to know what happened. You know, how was last night? Show interest, make conversation, things like that. But go to bed early. 
if you feel like nothing else is working or if you've done your whole self-care routine, you've hung out with a friend, you've organized your, you know, kitchen. Like I did that the other day where I was feeling really anxious. My man was going out and I, w I knew that the feelings were coming from like past trauma and things like that um, and guilt from my past. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to reorganize my kitchen, listen to a podcast, watch a show, play with my dog, walk my dog, call my mom, go to sleep. I had a plan that night. I knew what I was going to do. And sure, I did feel shitty at certain points in time, but I made it through the night. And the next morning, I felt so goddamn proud of myself and so happy and relieved that I did not sabotage, that my mood did not affect my man's night. I wanted him to enjoy truthfully. And I didn't want my insecurities to get into the way. Sometimes it's good to be able to deal with your shit on your own and not necessarily throw it on your partner, especially not on a night out. There is nothing worse than you bombarding your partner on a night out when they are not in the headspace nor the environment to deal with a conflict like this. It's not fair to put your partner in a position like that. If you have a problem, you talk about it the next day when there is no distraction and when they're not in the middle of something. To bombard somebody is to set them up for failure. You are doing this on purpose to sabotage your relationship. You are doing this on purpose to play into the narrative that you created in your head that he's too busy, that he doesn't care, that he's whatever. Not fair. To you, to your partner, and to your relationship. You feeling anxious about these things. I don't want to normalize it, but we have, we've all felt that way. We all get worried. Think about where the worry is coming from. Think about how you're going to fix that, right? So follow where the worry t leads you. What is this? Is it insecurity? Past trauma? Is it my guilt? Is there something I need to address? Something I need to let go? When you get rid of the source, it's not going to be that big of a deal. It's not going to be that hard for you to accept. It's not going to be that scary anymore. But we need to move back. We need to figure out and reroute and figure out where that's coming from. Once we do that, it'll be easier. Going forward, you have to understand too that there's a lot of insecurity tied up to this kind of worry when your partner is going out. Nobody can replace you. Nobody can be you. And if this person decides to fumble you, that's their loss and your gain always and fucking forever. Stop looking at losing somebody as a negative thing. It's clearing the way for something or somebody else. And just as a side note, if you are not having your own girls or boys night, that's something you need to be doing as well. It's important for you to both experience that and, you know, the other person's at home and you're out, be able to deal with, with this sort of dynamic because you're not going to always in life be together in every single moment. There will be times where you do need that. And it's very important in a relationship to take time for yourself and, you know, tend to other areas in your life that's outside of your relationship because there is more to life than your fucking relationship. I hope you know. It makes you stronger. It builds your trust. It teaches you, you know, where you need to work on. It shows you how to communicate in certain situations when you need to communicate what your partner might need in certain situations. And it might even open up a discussion as to your past or things that they should be aware of. I love you guys. You fucking got this. Stay true to yourself. Keep yourself busy. Do healthy work for yourself. Figure out where this is coming from so that you don't have to deal with this. You don't have to suffer every time your partner goes out. It is how life is going to be from here till forever. Your next partner, your hu husband, your this, your that. We'll have bachelor parties. We'll have other things to attend to that is going to make you possibly feel uncomfortable. How are you going to deal with it? How are you going to deal with it? Start now so it's easier for you in the future. So that your future self will say, thank fucking you. Thank God. We fix this now because... Now maybe it's just getting a little complicated. That's one less thing I have to worry about now. If you have any questions, any video suggestions, my comment section's always open for that purpose. If you have anything else to add to the community to help other people out, any other tips or tricks, how you overcame this, how you dealt with it, that would be great to share because everybody can learn from other people. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. It means the world. Hit the bell if you want to be notified every time I post a video. I'm on a roll. I am planning on posting quite frequently for the next little while. So stay tuned. There's gonna be a lot of content out here. I'm going in, I'm going deep. Make sure you rate my podcast five large and in charge stars. You know how I like it. I will see you guys back here very soon. Take care. Bye.